All right, so we got the second part of the recording here. Uh, kind of different style of problem. So we start with seven. Uh, seven is a linear programming problem. Um, so how I know that is this problem talks about um, maximizing net profit. So we want to maximize it. We want to optimize this. And the equation, you know, the what we're trying to to maximize is profit. So if you read through this problem, you'll notice we're talking about two types of calculators, uh, scientific and graphing. So sci our variable s is going to be number of scientific calculators. G will be number of graphing calculators. Um, and our profit equation. Profit will be a function of scientific and graphing. Um, each scientific is sold for a two dollar loss, so negative two s plus five g, because the graphing calculators uh, make you profit of five dollars each. Okay, so we're trying to maximize that profit equation, and now we need to really figure out the different combinations of, of calculators they can make. So if we go on back to the first paragraph here. Um, We've got some information. It says expect a demand of at least a hundred scientific and eighty graphing calculators each day. So they know the number of scientific they produce has got to be greater than or equal to a hundred. The number of graphing they produce has got to be greater than or equal to eighty. Um, they also have some limitations on capacity. Uh, no more than two hundred scientific. So while scientific is greater than or equal to 100, it's got to be less than or equal to 200. And graphing has to be less than or equal to 170. And then the final constraint says, as far as shipping goes, they got to ship at least 200 calculators every day. So the number of scientific plus the number of graphing needs to be greater than or equal to 200. So we're trying to maximize profit. Um, these are our constraints. We're going to use those to produce a graph, and, and that graph is going to show us um, the different combinations of scientific and graphing calculators that may maximize profit. And then we'll just have to take that region, look at all the uh, kind of all of the boundary points, and run them through our profit. So. That was a lot of talk in there. Um, we need to know what a graph of these constraints looks like, though. So let's produce a graph real quick. Well, this is the scientific axis. This is the graphing axis. Um, so scientific is greater than or equal to 100, less than or equal to 200. So here's 100, here's 200. Um, so graphing is greater than or equal to 80, less than or equal to 170. So these two guys, oops. These two guys right here, scientific being between 100 and 200, tells us that we're in this region. Pause this. Okay. Um, these two guys here force us to be in this band. So with just the, the first four constraints, we can already tell that we're going to be in this region right in here. But we've got one more, right? We've got kind of that diagonal line.
Now I don't have grid paper here, so I'll have to do a little bit more work. So S plus G is greater than or equal to 200. So if I was going to graph that, right, the intercepts of that line would be 0, 200, and 200, 0. So you got to figure out what side of that line you shade. It says S plus G must be greater than or equal to 200. So if our test point is this one right here, the 0, 0 point, 0 plus 0 greater than or equal to 200. No, it's not. So you'd shade the non-0, 0, 0 side of that line. So your feasible region ends up being in here. So as far as your test points go, one, two, three, four, five. Those are your five test points. Those are the ones you'd plug into your profit equation. Now we've got to figure out, though, what the coordinates of those test points are. So we know this one up here is 100, 170. This one is 200, 170. This guy here is 200, scientific, 80 graphing. Um, this one right here, let's see, that's the intersection of the of two lines. It's the S plus G equals 200, and it's also the um, G equals 80 line. So if you combine those two equations and solve, well, if G is 80, so if G here is 80, what plus 80 is? One is 200. Well, that's 120. So this is the point. 120. 120 comma 80. Okay, this next point is the intersection of the S plus G equals 200, and then also the S equals 100. So if you combine those two and solve that system, you'd get G also equals 100. So that's the point 100, 100. So I got four test points. One, I think five, two, three, four, five. If you go back up to the original problem, we were trying to maximize profit. This was our profit equation right here. So which of those points maximizes our profit equation? Oops. Okay. Okay. So here we go. So what you're going to do at this point is each of those five points we've identified, you're going to plug into the profit equation. Let me zoom out. See it? Okay. So each of these five here in blue, plug into your profit and figure out, we're trying to maximize profit, which of those five actually maximizes profit. So... I'm going to pause this and I'll just I'll, uh, grab the answer for you. Well, we'll do one of them for you. Let's say you were going to try to do 280. 200 is the S and 80 is the graphing. So you'd go negative 2 times 200 plus 5 times the graphing, which is 80. That's negative 400 plus um, 400. Well, that's a profit of zero. So maybe what you want to do is next to this point, you'd say zero. Then you could do another point. A and in the end, right, you're going to have one, two, three, four more numbers to look at. And you want to you want to pick the biggest one that's going to maximize your... Uh, the biggest one is going to represent your maximum profit. Okay. 
So I went through that. Um, your maximum profit was looked like right here six hundred and fifty dollars, and the combination you were looking for was a hundred scientific and a hundred and seventy um, graphing. So we can go to the next problem. We'll do a couple more on this video. I don't think we'll do all of them. Let's do. We've done a problem like eight before. Eight's kind of like the uh, the astronaut problem. Um, so another linear programming there. Let's go to nine. Nine. First thing you need to make a decision is is, th is this a linear programming problem? And it's it's not. You're just trying to figure out the value of these coins. So this is one you we can set up with a. System of equations. So three different colors of tokens. Um, for 20 bucks, you can get the following mixture of tokens: 14 gold, 20 silver, 24 bronze, or 20 gold, 15 silver, 19 bronze, or 30 gold, 5 silver, 13 bronze. What is the monetary value of each token? So $20 worth of tokens. So we need some some variables. It says, what is the monetary value of each token? Well, G is going to represent the value of gold token. Um, S is going to be the value of silver token. And B is going to be the value of the bronze So we're going to have three different equations we can pull out of this. So we got, this will be the first one. This will be the second one. This will be the third one. So for the one in yellow, it says $20 is produced by the combination of 14 golds, which are worth G a piece plus 20 silvers, plus 24 bronze. Here we got $20 will come from, this is the orange one, 20 gold. So 20 times G, that would be um, how much money 20 gold coupons, or gold tokens were worth. So 20 golds plus 15 silvers, plus 19 bronze. 20 is equal to 30 of the golds plus 5 of the silvers plus 13 of the bronze. So we've talked before about putting this into a matrix. So what that matrix would look like, remember the answers always go on the far right. So you got, so we got everything's lined up gold, silver, bronze, gold, silver, bronze, gold, silver, bronze. I'm going to move these guys over to the other side. So the final spot here will be 20, 20, 20. Then I'll go 14, 20, 24. 20, 15, 19. And then 30, 5, and 30, 5, and 13. So if I put that into a matrix and I go reduced row echelon form RF to that matrix, I end up with the values for G, S, and B. So I'll, I'll pause that. I'll put that into my calculator real quick. Okay, so I've got the gold coins as 50 cents a piece. Silver is 25 and the bronze is 35. So, which seems kind of weird that the bronze would be worth more than the silver. So let me pause again and make sure I got this right. I'm going to check my matrix in my calculator. Okay, yep, so I checked my work again and we're good. So moving on. Um, 10, I'll show you how I set up the equations. Uh, 10, you had 20 individual placers combined for 68 points. Um, 
and those individual placers um, came from first, second, and third. So you know that the number of, we're going to define the variables, F, S, T. So F will be number of first place. S will be number of second place. T will be number of third place. So the equations that I pulled out of 10 um, were F plus S plus T equals 20. Um, five first, f let's see, first place is worth five points. Second place is worth three points. And third place is worth one. And their total number of points was 68. And they also said that um, they had as many, we're looking at this last piece, as many second place finishers so as first and third combined. So these are your three equations. I would choose to rewrite the last one so that you can you know, kind of set up a matrix here. So I'd minus the S over so you'd get, um, you'd really get 0 equals um, Let's see, first minus, so F minus S plus T. So I just subtracted S from both sides. Left me with 0. And then the other side was F minus S plus T. So I can make a matrix out of that. So if I were to do that, matrix I would come up with. So there's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So it would be 1, 1, 1, 20, 5, 3, 1, 68, 1, negative 1, 1, and 0. I do reduced row echelon on that, and that would give me an answer. Uh, 11, Todd, Don, and Carla can weld 37 linear feet per hour and working together. Todd and Don together can weld 22 linear feet per hour. So we need some variables. You're going to have T, D, and C. So T is going to be the number of linear feet per hour Todd can do. D will be number of linear feet that um, Don can do per hour, and C is number of linear feet per hour Carla can do. So I didn't write it all, um, but those are my variables. So then it starts saying, okay, Todd and Donna, Todd and Don together can weld 22 linear uh, linear feet per hour. So you'd have T plus D is 22. Todd and Carla can do 25. Um, and when they all work together, it was T plus D plus C is 37. So one thing you'll notice here is this equation here is missing. It's 1T plus 1C. It's missing D. So you can actually, you can rewrite this guy as 1T plus 0. 1T plus 0D plus 1C equals 25. And then the top one I would rewrite as 1t plus 1d plus 0c equals 22. So then I'd build a matrix with this guy, this guy, and this guy. All right, one more problem. One 
more for your review here. Uh, 15, 16. See, so, hey, if I look at 13 real quick, one of the things, you know, as you set this up, make sure everything lines up. You got your X's, you got your Y's, you got your Z's, the equal signs line up, and you got your constants. Sometimes you'll have to do some rearranging. Um, 12, I think the basic idea on 12 is you need to know how many of each type were sold. So I've got adult tickets. A would be the number of adult tickets. Sold. Um, senior citizen we'll do is S is going to be number of senior tickets sold. And C will be number of children's tickets told. Okay. So from that, you could build your equations. Right? And you know that the adult are 550. So 550 times the number of adult will get you the profit on the adult. Plus Seniors are four dollars a piece, and then the children's are one fifty. And they made a total of fourteen nine seventy. So that's one equation you have. Another one you have is um, on opening day the number of children's and senior tickets was thirty more than half the number of adults. So half the number of adults plus thirty is equal to the children's plus the seniors. And you could rewrite that equation. I'd multiply everything by 2. Right? And that would be a plus 60 equals 2c plus 2s. And I'd probably rearrange it. So this would be um, let's see. I'll move the 2c Oh, that should be an s. I'm going to move both these guys over to the left and the 60 over to the right. So this would be A minus 2C minus 2S equals negative 60. That way, this guy, you know, when you set it up with the matrix, is going to line up with this guy. And then there's one more equation. Um, the number of senior tickets was five more than four times the number of children's tickets. So senior tickets is five more than four times the children's. So, it's getting messy. So another way to write this equation um, is I'm going to move the 4C over to the left. So I have zero A's minus four C's plus one, I think children's went last. 0 A's plus 1 S minus 4 children's is equal to 5. And now this guy lines up. And you got your three equations. 1, 2, 3. You can set up a matrix and go ahead and solve. So, nicely done. Appreciate you sticking with me. Um, got to practice and getting better. So, uh, good luck and thanks a lot for watching.